What? Why do we get a wide receiver? Why do we get a wide receiver? There you go. Rest in peace, good buddy. Um, Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. It's Thirsty Thursday. Um, I'm going to be heading up the road, so I'll be on the road again. I just can't wait to get on the road again. Yeah, I'll be on the road. And a lot of you woke up this morning with your cell phones apparently not working. AT&T has had a major outage that's also affecting Cricket and T-Mobile and some of the other networks and things. Hopefully they get that shit fixed because without a cell phone, most people will go completely crazy. So this morning, right now currently we are working supposedly on Dak Prescott getting a new contract and it's pissing people off and you know I can't help y'all it is what it is the Cowboys need cap relief and it's one of those things that you could uh, cut off your nose to spite your face if you like but if you keep Dak Prescott at 60 million you're going to end up with nothing going down the road and you're not going to be able to improve the team you literally are shutting the door on next season if you don't get him a deal be that as it may, if Jerry Jones was all in, and if you're listening right now about Stefan Diggs, which is always, Stefan recognizes that he has to be a bit of a drama queen to get the love that the Dallas Cowboys players get. Uh, it's, it's the truth. You know, you don't hear about Stefan Diggs in Buffalo because they're not the Cowboys. Now, we know Stefan Diggs has always said, or both of the Diggs brothers say they would like to play with their brother on their team. And at the moment, according to DraftKings, the odds are favored to keep um, Stefan Diggs would be the Buffalo Bills at minus 300. And if not, then the Chiefs and Texans are at 1,000, and the Cowboys, Bears, and Ravens are at uh, plus 1,200. Uh, so the chances are not, or at least the odds are not great. So, but... If you do put some money on it, you, you could make out if the Cowboys were to do it. Now, here's the thing. We know that we are currently $21 million over the cap with the projections maybe that the cap will go up to $250 million. We actually are only about $13 million under. If we get Dak Prescott's deal done, if we get um, Amari Cooper's deal, excuse me, Amari Cooper, CeeDee Lamb's deal done, 40 and slip, um, we'd actually create even more space. And then if we end up moving on, from Michael Gallup, if we make him a post-June 1st cut, we could get about another eight there. We could restructure some contracts and so on. And so here's my argument on how you could actually um, make this work. Now, here's what's interesting. I want to put up over the cap here, okay? The Buffalo Bills, now we, we think we're in bad shape cap-wise. The Buffalo Bills are $55 million over the cap they have to get down by the 13th they have to get down to zero and of course they're going to want to sign players and so on now the thing is is surprisingly enough um i believe the fourth highest cap hit is josh allen at 47.56 now they could probably restructure his deal and get a good chunk of that kick more of the money down the road you know, probably get about $25 million or so out of that. So it's that, that will help them get about halfway there. If you look at the second highest cap hit that they have is Stefan Diggs, and behind that is Von Miller. They're screwed with Von Miller's contract. Von Miller is a $32 million um, cap hit. They definitely screwed up. Let's see. Let's go through. Okay. They literally have to hold on to Von Miller because if they cut him, 
they're going to co- it's going to cost them more to have him off the roster by 11 million dollars than to pay him the 23 which sounds crazy unless they make him a post June first cut but they're still going to pay him 32 million they literally are paying von miller like a quarterback be that as it may if you look at stefan diggs's number he's a 27 million dollar cap hit for this year if they cut him or trade him pre june 1st they still take on $18 million, but they do get $9.7 million. Cutting him is not what you want to do. You want, if you're going to get rid of him, you, a guy you gave up a number one for, you would like to get a trade because then, of course, you're getting something in return. Now, knowing that they have issues, now they could go ahead and restructure Von Miller if they want to, but if you start looking down the list, the next one is um, Dawkins at $16 million. They're not saving any money on cutting guys. They are, uh, Take a look. Cutting guys, literally, with the, until you get down to uh, Tehran Johnson, will cost them more money. And the only thing they could do is kick the money down the road, with the exception of Stephon Diggs. So Stephon Diggs, by looking at this, if you're saying we have to get some cap room, are you going to sit here and say, we're going to go ahead and we're going to restructure Von Miller? Put more money down for later on when you already have a $32 million debt hit? I don't think you will. Um, Dawkins, you may go ahead and do that, but that's still only chump change in comparison to uh, the money that you need. You're going to have to get rid of some people. And so you look at this and say, hmm, if we cut Stefan Diggs, and we get a pick in return, then that pick can be used to replace Stefan Diggs. And we'll get $9.7 million in cap relief. Now, here's the thing. And the reason why I say it needs to be a pre-June 1st is they need, to, they need the money now. If they were able to make the trade after June 1st, it actually doesn't... Um, I'm sorry, let's change it. Post-June 1st, it would save them more in the cap by 13 million but the problem is is they need to cash now this is like a payday loan you need to cash now you can't wait so if the bills are going to do anything with stefan diggs it behooves them to do it before the draft get your draft pick get a guy that you can use to replace him you're not going to get with von miller nobody's going to trade for that contract for von miller and putting more money on Von Miller down the road makes no sense whatsoever. So you're kind of stuck with it. He is the only one that you can really do this with and get compensation. Now, if I'm the Dallas Cowboys, here's what I'm thinking. Stefan Diggs wants to play with his brother. Stefan Diggs, you know, the Buffalo Bills found a winning formula going down the stretch. If you remember when the Bills um, played us, they ended up changing what they started doing and focused more on running the football. And that seemed to be the what turned their season back around. And so you start looking at Stephon Diggs, who last year had 1,183 yards, um, eight TDs, but as you went down the year, his numbers started going downhill. When they started playing the Cowboys, um, four receptions, 48 yards um, against the Chargers, five receptions, 29 yards. Patriots, four receptions, 26 yards. Dolphins, the last big game that he had, seven catches, 87 yards. Steelers, seven catches, 52 yards. And the Chiefs, three catches for 21 yards. They literally just kind of stopped really using him. If you looked at what they were doing early on the season, the Jets, he had 102 yards and 10 receptions. Commanders, 111. Dolphins, 120. Jaguars, 121. Giants, 100. And so on. So we had all those big numbers early in the season where they were using him a lot problem was is the more they kept passing the football the more josh allen would turn over the football and he led the league in uh turnovers he just did 
He had twice the interceptions that Dak did. So you were getting great numbers statistically, but you were getting the turnovers. And conveniently, they have seemed to have forgotten that he had 22 turnovers on the season. Last year, we were killing Dak Prescott on his 17th. Be that as it may. If you're not using Stefan Diggs, if over the course when you changed your game plan around that you only got about 50 yards of production out of him, then it may be time to go ahead and say that may be the move to make. If I'm the Cowboys, I'm looking at what has happened with my second round draft picks. I don't know that Buffalo will take a second round draft pick. I don't know. They may want to get a first again because that's what they used when they originally got him uh, three years ago. But then again, deadlines make deals happen. And if you start talking to Buffalo at the combine, which is when teams start kind of talking with each other starting Monday. And this is one of those ones where Jerry Jones or Stephen Jones, you know, sitting up there watching the players work out and things. And, you know, they say, hey, you know, Buffalo, man, what's going on with Stefan? Yeah, man, Stefan, you know, he's a diva, man. Uh, you know, he, 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 you have to treat him a certain kind of way and stuff. And that contract we have with him, man, it's, you know, we're, we're, we're over the cap and stuff. And, and then you kind of say, well, you know, may, maybe we can work something out. If you sit here and think that we have to start cutting people to get under the cap, and when you start cutting him and you're getting nothing in return, all of a sudden, cutting digs or excuse me trading digs and getting a trade pick back and getting cap relief sounds actually pretty good because they're going to have to get 55 million by the 13th and if we look at stefan Diggs's, knowing that um part of his contract will have to be covered by the buffalo bills and maybe the cowboys say we'll help you cover some of that contract Kind of like what was happening when we were trying to trade for Brandon Cooks. But you pull the trigger this time. And you say, you know what? How about this? We'll take half of his contract. We'll take half of his contract. You take the other half. And we'll call it a day. You get Stefan Diggs for $13 million. They end up getting $13 million in cap relief. And a second round pick. Now, all of a sudden, that's a win-win. You move on from Michael Gallup. You make him a post-June 1st cut, and you'll have his money to use later on when you're signing your draft picks. Am I crazy or just plain stupid? That would be a scenario to me that could work for everybody. Now, you don't have a second-round pick. I get that. But now you've got CD that you go ahead and get him signed. And you can reduce his $17.9 million hit. You've got another playmaking wide receiver right there. And let me look at one other thing. If you didn't want to hold on to Brandon Cooks. If you didn't want to hold on to Brandon Cooks because you're bringing in Diggs, his cap number is $10 million. You could incur $6 million in dead money, but gain $4 million. So between Michael Gallup, here's the thing. Michael Gallup is, if you make him a pre-June 1st cut, is $13 million. If you make him a post-June 1st cut, you save 9 you won't be able to use that money, of course, until after June 1st. But if you think about the $9 million you get there and the $4 million for Brandon Cooks, that's $13 million. And you saying, we'll take on half of his contract this year. Now, all of a sudden, that's a wash. Maybe I'm wrong. Prove me wrong. But I think it could actually work. Let's see here what... Uh, the five biggest moves that they think were going to happen or should happen this offseason.
moves I absolutely believe should happen in the NFL this off season. And we begin at number five. You know what they say about how the grass is not always greener? You know who knows that better than anyone? Devontae Adams. He decided to leave Aaron Rodgers and look how it's worked out. All he's done is lose. The Jets are in desperation mode. They can trade absolutely anything in their future because they're going to get fired if they don't win it all this year. Reunite Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers. The Jets should trade for Devontae from the Raiders. At number four, another receiver who I think needs a change of scenery. Stefan Diggs, it is clearly over in Buffalo. I don't know why, but it is. So why not reunite him or unite him with his brother? in Dallas. The Cowboys desperately need a player who can do exactly what Stefan Diggs can do. I don't know that he's a number one receiver anymore, even though people keep trying to tell me that he is. They have one in C.D. Lamb. He could be the missing piece to an offense that needs to take another step late in the season. Number three, we've talked about Justin Fields already this morning. I would like to see Justin Fields in Pittsburgh. I know the world has him in Atlanta. And there might be a lot of sense to be made in that as well. But I'd like to see Mike Tomlin with that quarterback, with that opportunity finally to silence all of the critics. And there are a lot of them locally about what this team can do, about what he can do. You put Justin Fields on the Steelers. I think they're a Super Bowl candidate. Number two, I believe the Raiders desperately need to move up to draft a quarterback. They are not in a position right now where they could go up and get one of the quote unquote big three in this draft. Are they willing to be that aggressive? Maybe. If they're not willing to be that aggressive, maybe they move up just a few spots to make sure they get their choice of J.J. McCarthy or Bo Nix or any of the next collection of quarterbacks. And the reason I don't think they can is because at my number one, and I believe this is a real possibility, I'd like to see the New York Giants make an aggressive move up to number three, trading with New England and taking Drake May. I believe May will be the quarterback who is available at number three. I think Caleb Williams goes one. I think Jaden Daniels goes two. Who does Drake May remind you at least a little bit of? Interesting, too. Josh Allen? Maybe? Could Brian Dayball find his next Allen here? Bring Drake May in. Let him sit a year or maybe at least part of a year. Let Daniel Jones try and prove that he deserves to remain the quarterback of that team. And if it doesn't go that way, because I don't think the Giants are sold that that is their future, I think Brian Dayball and Drake May might be a very nice combination going forward. So those are five moves I would like to see going okay. forward. We're, we're going to leave it right there because they, they basically go talk more about Drake May more than anything else. But this is what all in would look like to me this is what a move that would say okay we do this and then if you end up turning around and let's say you end up signing derrick henry i know trust me i know this is all like fantasy football and stuff that stephen jones will not try and do we we all know that okay but let's at least dream let's at least dream about a possibility so that's what i have for you this morning and i'm going to get ready to get up on the road it's going to be raining so i want to get ahead of the rain and uh definitely check it out on my other channel we're going to be working on a house that was built in 1867 um, i never get the new houses to work on i always get the old shit but um it's going to be fun all right good people you have a great day and as always remember you play to win the game Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win.